This is the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season. Sugar beet planting is wrapping up and producers are preparing for early season insects. Mark Botel, NDSU Extension Entomologist, has the latest concerning these early season pests. Mark, now that most of the beets are planted, what are some of the things producers should be watching for on insects? Seedling emergence and development rates should be watched closely at this time. Just look for any uh, uneven emergence or failure to emerge or wilting and dying plants. That can sometimes be characteristic of uh, springtail, wireworm, a white grub, cutworm problems, those kind of things. So, And we have had some early reports of wireworm problems very scattered at this point and actually widely scattered from southern Minnesota all the way up to Walsh County near Grafton. What are the best control options for these pests? With the early season stand loss, usually the best thing is going to be replanting. So uh, as quickly as possible to get back in there. And then if you have the option to put an insecticide on at planting to prevent another loss. The key to managing insects like cutworms is catching them early. You may be able to do a rescue and not have to replant, but actually use a foliar insecticide. So I would advise on that to use a sprayable liquid, something like a, either a chlorpyrifos product or a, a pyrethroid insecticide should do a good job on them. Well, Mark, we have to talk about our old pal, the root maggot. What do you expect the root maggot impact might be this year? You know, we can tell a lot about what's going to happen this year by looking back at what happened the last couple of years. That'll tell us where some of those hot spots might be expected. In 2023, the populations had dipped a little bit, valley-wide, that is, compared to 2022, but we're still at very high levels, and we expect similar things to happen this year. Some of the worst areas last year were in the central and northern valley, like they are just about every year. But we also had the baker Sabin area where we had very high populations last year. So the high potential for damaging infestations this year are going to be essentially the highest probability would be in locations where you had problems last year. We're going to be doing the uh, root maggot fly monitoring network again this year. We hope to get that up and running. Actually, my crew is putting stakes in fields as we speak. In the next five to seven days, most of those stakes should be out. We'll announce when we're actually going to start counting. Just as a reminder, we do the counts every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and on those same three days per week, we do post them in near real time for the growers and for other ag professionals. And they're very easy to find, they're very searchable and findable online. I know it's super early, Mark, but can you give us a rough idea when peak fly might occur? Sure. This year appears to be running, tracking very similar to last year. Peak fly occurs at about 650 degree day units. That's root maggot degree day units. Right now we're between 250 to 275, depending on latitude within the valley. So given the 10-day extended weather forecast, it suggests that peaks may happen somewhere around uh, a week or so ahead of the historical averages. Again, very similar to last year. If you want a real long, put yourself out on a limb and saw yourself off (laughs) forecast, I would put us at somewhere between June 4 and June 10th or so. So we'll know a whole lot more in the next week after these uh, rainy systems kind of go through and we see what we get for degree day accumulations. It's certainly very likely that we'll be in that one week ahead of uh, normal or average. Thanks, Mark. Our guest has been Mark Botel, NDSU Extension Entomologist. This has been the Sugar Beet Report, bringing you the latest information from NDSU throughout the sugar beet growing season.